Welcome back to that 911 guy. After the recent madness of driving 959s, looking at the Panamericana concept car and testing out the seven speed 992, we're gonna be doing something a little bit more humble today. It involves my 996. We're gonna be looking at the modifications I've done so far, but crucially, we're gonna be rating each one of them as well. <laughs> going to begin with chassis on this 996 because as you might remember from the start of the year when I did a video looking at my plans for the car for 2020 the lower arms were knackered all around weren't they identified by a squeak when we pushed down on this very wing the squeaks eliminated that is because as I say the car has had new lower arms and actually quite a lot of new suspension arms all round you may remember from the video I did on that that I went against one of my rules for using Porsche official parts only, and I actually went for Myler arms all round at a significant cost saving. How are they faring up so far? Absolutely fine, it has to be said. Gone are the squeaks and rattles that this car was uh, blessed with, shall we say. It. Staying with chassis, also put KW coilovers on. That was always planned to happen for this year. I cannot tell you how much I rate KW coilovers. I went for the V3s at about two and a half thousand pounds uh, for the product obviously it's plus fitting on top of that also is a big thing as well you must get new top mounts i did actually go for the oem porsche top mounts for those the v3s are absolutely excellent i said in the video at the time and i'm going to say it again that if you're going to do one modification to your 996 i really would look at a good set of aftermarket coilovers these fuchs wheels in 8 and 10 by 18 inch specification i think were around 2800 quid probably in the more expensive range of aftermarket wheels, but there is a weight saving over the, even the sport design wheels that I had on before. The thing that really bugged me is they didn't come with center caps. I think I said at the time, it's a bit like buying a replica football shirt without the club crest on. Fuchs, for the amount of money these people are paying for the wheels, you've got to be giving those center caps away. Ducktail. As you probably remember from my video in 2019 now, it's been on Little Irish for 18 months. This is the carbon fibre CSR ductile from RPM Technic. Again, as I've said before, that profile, it mirrors the 997 Sport Classic almost identically, doesn't it? I think it's absolutely beautiful to look at. It's carbon fibre, the fit and finish on it is absolutely perfect. It's got a weight saving, quite a substantial one over stock as well. It looks awesome, is a lot of money, but in my mind, the product is significant improvement over fiberglass products, which, well, they don't even rival it in my view. So again, that CSR ducked out, it's a big win for me. Come down to the rear of the car, we have got looking at the exhaust coming off the M96 engine. You may or may not remember that at the back end of 2019, I put on a pair of Dansk Sport mufflers. I wasn't that impressed with them, was I? I think sound wise, it's actually quieter than what I had on this car beforehand. Admittedly, those back boxes were severely perished, so they needed to be replaced. I mentioned at the start of the year that I'm gonna replace these Dansk Sport back boxes. I haven't got around to doing it yet, but believe me, I'm going to. The clamps are starting to corrode pretty severely as well already, so it's something that I might be forced to look at sooner rather than later. They will be going. Take a look inside Little Irish, shall we? I think the big change in terms of appearance is the steering wheel. It's a Momo Mod 7, they're about 250 to 300 quid depending on where you buy it from, uh, plus the boss kit, plus fitting of course. Probably one of the, my favourite modifications from this year actually, and it's a really good value modification to do as well for relatively little money. It's quite transformational in terms of how the car feels. I actually took the car to Paul Stevens and had a little bit of further customisation done. The yellow 12 o'clock marker I had turned to green, obviously it's colour match with the paint uh, on the outside and also the Momo logo as well has changed from uh, yellow to something that is similar to Irish green. What else have we got inside? That I'm going to slide in for this because we've got first of all uh, the shifter is a factory short shift kit. It's not actually factory, it's original Porsche. It reduces the throw by around 30% 
price wise 300 to 400 quid depending on where you get it from again i really rate that i've talked about the steering wheel in that being like a primary connection between car and driver well it's actually one of three things isn't it you've got your steering wheel you've got your shifter and you've got your pedals but as i say that shifter reduces the throw by 30 percent on the porsche item aftermarket versions vary of course um it's a really nice shift on this car when warm admittedly when cold it's a little bit clunky but it's a shorter throw it's therefore more direct and therefore more engaging isn't it in terms of your driving experience twinned with this wheel as i say where it's moved a little bit towards me i really like the relationship between the wheel and the shifter and to me obviously the pedals as well i mentioned that that's another important uh, source of engagement for the driver. I've actually had a lightweight flywheel fitted. So this is uh, the CSR lightweight flywheel from RPM Technic. A modification like that you'll typically do when it comes to replacing your clutch. Um, my clutch probably does need replacing again soon actually, which is a little bit concerning. I think I've probably done about 25,000 miles. Um, I don't know if that's anything to do with the flywheel or not, but as I say, um, it's perfectly palatable round town and it allows really nice, smooth, gear changes uh, when you're doing sporty driving. Pedal position as well, by the way, is awesome on the 996 for heel and toe. In terms of the short shifter, yes, there are aftermarket options available. I think with something like that, you should just go with uh, Porsche's item. I think it's absolutely fine. My gearbox is a little bit clunky when cold, but that's more to do with uh, the gearbox itself rather than the shifter. That's pretty much it in terms of steering wheel, shifter and uh, pedal relationship. It's really important to get that right. That is your core connection between you as a driver and your car, physically of course. Aesthetics wise, I hate this shifter. They look absolutely awful to look at, so I will be changing that next year. That's just an aesthetical thing. PCCM, you'll remember I did a video on getting this, I think around about three months ago now. I'm still loving it just as much as I did the day I got it. It still blows my mind that I can get podcasts and uh, interactive maps and Spotify and digital radio all in a 22 year old Porsche 911. It absolutely blows my mind. I've kept the phone for comical reasons. Obviously I don't use that. Again, when I did the video on the PCCM, there was a lot of conjecture, perhaps rightly so from people watching the video that it is a lot of money. I think that investment is worth it. It's a proper Porsche product, so there's no kind of dodgy aftermarket bodging going on there. It looks like it's meant to be there as well. And again, I would actually argue that that gives a positive effect on the value of your 996 in comparison to one that had an aftermarket product fitted. That is about it, certainly on the inside of the car. Shut this door and come round. So, plans for next year, as I mentioned. I want to change up the look of the car slightly. It'll involve the wheels primarily and a couple of other little bits. There are a few maintenance points that I need to do. It has just had its uh, yearly service, by the way, but I need new drop links. And actually my coolant expansion tank uh, has got a little bit of a crack in it. It is a bit of a common 996 problem. It's fairly expensive to fix as well. It's 400 quid for the part alone and you do need to drop the engine out slightly for it. But that is about it. That's all the modifications rated on Little Irish. It's something I've wanted to do for a while because it's all well and good putting these things on your car, but we need to come back to them further down the line, don't we, and see with hindsight and experience and use how they stack up. As I say, only one modification really that I regret and I probably will be changing that at the start of next year. Otherwise, I'm really, really happy with everything I've done to this car so far. I hope it inspires you at home to do something similar to yours. And of course, if you've got any questions on any modifications that I've done here or on 996 generally, put it in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you again soon.